Okay, I'm ready to go. Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork Radio. Thanks for taking the time to listen to us. Thanks for downloading the show. Um, New listeners, it's the most eclectic DIY show you've ever heard. And uh, regular listeners, welcome back. Uh, And let me turn off my phone. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'll turn mine off while I'm at it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. listened to the previous show, but that was kind of a long one. It was the audio version of my uh, latest YouTube live stream, which I listened to as a podcast. And I'm like, this is bouncing all over the place because I was responding to people's comments and I should have read the comments, I guess. So um, if that was painful for you, I'm sorry. This is a more, well, it's a different kind of pain. We're talking with Rick. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, my friend. How are you? I'm good. I have a friend uh, who does wants to be nameless, but he has a uh, he's a market farmer and he listens to us. Um, and he had some interesting insights on Rick. <laughs> yeah, is he is is he still in business? I mean, if he's been listening to us, <laughs> well, he just has to pass the time while he's picking weeds and stuff. He's got some pretty interesting stuff yeah. going on. But uh, oh, what what are what are his interesting insights on Rick? I have to tell you off radio here. So. Oh, that, that, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Might have to refer you to some help. <laughs> no, but today we're going to be talking about a uh, new Firefox browser, uh, my interesting Instagram uh, problem, some vegetables that are healthier when cooked, and Aaron, the impatient gardener's raids beds, and a typewritten viewer mail letter. Okay. So Rick, you want to start? You or you sent me an article about Firefox, and then I read a follow-up article. Yeah, um, I'm beginning to. You know, Firefox was the browser for a long time, and then it kind of fell by the wayside. But in this age of privacy uh, concerns and anonymous and tracking and and all the things that are going on, Firefox, which is a an independent uh, nonprofit nonprofit, and I contribute to them every year, uh, are developing uh, probably one of the best browsers around. It's light as far as uh, the resources it uses on your computer. It's very protective. And the most important thing is, go ahead. It has a, it's called, I don't know if it's a plugin, but you can turn on a great privacy feature that puts Facebook in a box. Kind of a sandbox, yeah. Um, right. So normally, Facebook can track your browsing activities even outside its social media site by using trackers planted on other websites like Web Cookies, which Garden Fork does not do. It's called uh, pinging. No, it's called. I can't remember well, what, what it's they, called. What they are is they're called the Facebook Pixel, and it's just yes, a single a, a single pixel in on a picture or on a website that contains enough information that gathers enough information that Facebook can track you everywhere you go. Right. So if there's a, um, if there's one of those little things on the, on the page that says, follow me on Facebook, it may have, it's possible it has a pixel. It, it depends on if they're, if they're trying to sell you something, it does have a Facebook pixel. Right. But it says normally um, with Mozilla's extension, when you open Facebook on a browser tab, it isolates your Facebook identity into its own container, making it difficult for the social network to follow you outside its site. I also, when I, prior to this, when I'm looking at Facebook, I have, I close Firefox, I restart it fresh, I have a private window open and it's only Facebook. I don't have any other browser windows open. Right. And then I want done with Facebook, I close it. But with this new extension, uh, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I'm I'm very thrilled that Facebook, or um, I'm sorry, uh, Firefox is taking the the initiative and trying to make uh, web browsing a lot safer and less intrusive for all of us. The Electronic so. Frontier Foundation, Cooper Quinton, is a security researcher there. He says, Firefox seemed to have positioned itself as a privacy-friendly browser, and they have been doing a fantastic job improving security as well. On the other hand, Google, which has Chrome, Google is fundamentally an advertising company, so it's unlikely that they will ever have a business interest in making Chrome more privacy-friendly. But then Google said privacy and security went hand in hand, and it led the industry on both fronts. So, you know, read into that what you want. Yeah, um, they, they, they kind of um, 
horse race back and forth along there. Some nice things, though, I've, I've read recently about Google is uh, they have been integrating the inventory, electronic inventory for stores all over the country. And if you search for an item now on, on Google, uh, it will tell you if it's in a store that's near you and how much uh, how many they have left and that kind of thing. A brick what and they're trying store, yeah. a, a brick and mortar store. So if you're interested in trying to help uh, your uh, uh, your uh, brick and mortar people survive and and deal with local people, this is a good way to kind of at least balance out that impulse to go to Amazon, which I'm I'm a Ooh. just regular orders that come in now. So uh, uh, I don't even have to order them; they just show up. Uh, but, um, you know, if you're interested in, uh, in supporting your local merchants, and we all really should be, then uh, that's something else to look at before you immediately jump onto, uh, onto uh, Amazon. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's conflicting for me because actually the Amazon revenue that we get is substantial for Garden Fork. But then there's also that part of me that I try and go to local stores as much as possible. So, oh, did I just did I just torpedo you? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, in Brooklyn here, and I actually see it in the suburbs when I go traveling. Um, there are lots of empty storefronts in sh in the strip malls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't mean to uh, torpedo your business there, but no, uh, no. Anyway, it's, actually, it's, it's, um, yeah. my the business model of Garden Fork is tilting more and more toward uh, listener support much like a PBS or NPR model. and Sure, um, that's couple, done through the link to uh, Patreon. Yeah, a couple of people have signed up lately, uh, won a pretty big dollar amount. I was kind of stunned by that, but they just said, yeah. I like what you're doing. So, yeah, okay. you know, um, and, and this is the problem um, with everyone that's in the creative business that are trying to, to use the web to at least break even and you know, buy equipment and, and, and make the time worthwhile. Rick is paying my mortgage, by the way. So thank you. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, <laughs> Okay. Do you know what I did find on Amazon, though, that I thought was just amazing because I've been looking for them? Uh, everyone knows I've had um, um, cataract, cataract surgery, surgery, both eyes. And I'm 2015 in both eyes. That's amazing, really. He, he doesn't see that very often, my ophthalmologist. But the depth of field begins at about 10 feet away from me. So it's 10 feet to infinity, I have 2015. Between 10 feet and myself, it's really blurry. And so lately to counteract that, I've been carrying like three pairs of bifocals, a 1.5, a, 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 a 3.5, and maybe a two or something. And switching, you know, sometimes I have all three on the top of my head, switching back and <laughs> forth, trying, you know, depending on what I'm doing. But now you can buy without a prescription. Um, uh, graduated? Yeah, graduated bifocals. What are the um, progressive bifocals on Amazon? And uh, I got some that were um, clear on the top and 2.5 on the bottom. And so I can, when I look up, I can see clearly. And then when I look down at the computer or the dashboard or uh, when I'm reading, I can see clearly as well, just by kind of moving my head a little bit. It really works out, and they have been just, a, I, I imagine, for like beekeepers. I had taken out a, uh, I got two pairs of the same lens with different um, uh, visions, different strengths, and I'd taken the lenses on the left side out and swapped them. So uh, on one side, it was 1.5. On the other side, it was like 5 or 6 or something, fairly, <laughs> very close magnification for when I'm under the hood. Yep. So I can I can look over the top of the glasses normally, and then when I need to inspect deep inside the cells and look for the um, the egg or something, I could use that five um, uh, x uh, magnification to to look in there. But this with the progressives are really um, useful, and they're only like uh, say twenty five bucks or so, which is a, a real deal, and uh, they help with my driving because the uh, the uh, dashboard was out of focus when I was driving. I could, I could see real well, but I'd have to put on my, my uh, readers to look at the dashboard. But now I can look at that. I can look at ways and everything works, uh, works the way it should. So if you're uh, like me and you're uh, uh, worried about, um, you know, vision problems, you might want to give these a look and give them a try. 
I was pulling nails out of a tin ceiling the other day, and the you know, tin ceiling's been painted, you know, fifteen times, and trying oh, to yeah. find the nail heads, and they were just—I couldn't see them. I was like, because I was just too close, and my my glasses weren't strong enough, so I was just like, okay, so I kind of. Yeah stood back a bit so I could see the nail heads. I was... You know, they can get you a prescription, almost anything you want. In the Navy, uh, with aircraft mechanics that were somewhat older, uh, or people inspecting work, uh, we actually cut bifocals that were on the top of the glasses. So when you were looking up underneath the aircraft, you could see what you were doing. Oh, that's good to have when you're working on aircraft, yeah. Yeah, well, or even, uh, you know, nails above your head, anything that's <laughs> above your head. So um, last month and this month, I got this text message from my evil cell phone provider saying that I had gone over my cellular data rate. And I'm like, mm. what's what's with that? And last month, uh, my buddy's kid had to use my hot hotspot, cellular hotspot. And I was like, well, he probably just watched a ton of videos and ruined my data rate. And then this month I got the same warning. I'm like, you're over. And so um, I went to the company's website. You know, you can look at your profile. And it actually broke down for me the data over the month and what it was being used for. And the most it was being used for was social media tools. And I'm like, social media tools? And I realized um, since I installed a VPN on my phone, uh, I wasn't using a burner anymore for Instagram, my old bro- my old broken phone. And um, I put Instagram on the regular phone, and I didn't turn off use cellular data for Instagram. And so it was constantly updating and constantly downloading new pictures in the uh, background. Oh, yeah. And it pulled like four gigs over the month. <laughs> So I just, with a simple swipe, you can, in the settings, uh, the Apple operating system settings for your phone, turn off cellular data on a app by app basis. And I turned off background refresh and cellular data. So I will remind myself just to use it on Wi-Fi. But um, that cost me some money, those overages. (laughs) You know, there's something else in the uh, uh, Apple uh, iOS operating system, and I forget exactly where it is, but it uses... Uh, it connects to Wi-Fi to boost your cell phone signal. So it kind of combines both of them, and it will just begin pulling uh, Wi-Fi signals from nearby places to help boost your uh, signal. And I forget what it's called, but it's worth looking up. Uh, You should turn that off as well. Oh, turn it off or turn it on? No, turn it off. You don't want it uh, uh, because it's – well – it burns up your that it's good for in the case of uh, pricing for your uh, your uh, cellular business, but it's bad for battery uh, life. Oh, OK. Yeah, because right, it, it, it's very busy and it, it works really hard at, uh, at finding those places. And so it uses a ton of, uh, of uh, battery life. All right. So let's pivot 180 degrees um, and talk about vegetables. Ah, uh, I tell you, I love vegetables. How's your garden looking this year? Uh, a couple of setbacks, but um, my kale was almost completely devastated by some munching thing. And so I um, uh, I posted pictures on our Facebook discussion group and people said it was either the cabbage loper or, sn- or slugs. And I put out slug bait traps and got almost nothing. And so I think it's the cabbage loper. And I went nuclear fairly quickly and put some neem spray, but I only sprayed the kale itself. I didn't spray the ground or anything. I just sprayed the kale with the neem. So right. Well, yeah. My, um, Thomas Jefferson said, "You know, the, the one of the marvels of gardening is that you know what you lose on one side, uh, one." season you almost always gain on the other side so if you have bad kale one year you might have great tomatoes to kind of make up for it and then the next year you might have uh really great cabbages and bad tomatoes so it all you know if you grow enough it all kind of evens out year to year and i I like that idea the yin and yang of thomas jefferson Uh, that's it uh but anyway uh consumers report by the way Eric and I are both big supporters of Consumer Report. I'm sure you all know this, but they've been doing a, some uh, 
great articles on healthy eating. I mean, all kinds of different foods and whatnot. Why you should eat uh, the the brachia. Uh, uh, as often as you can, why the, the white vegetables are better or as good for you as the green ones, all kinds of stuff. But this one is about uh, vegetables that are that actually release more of the uh, good stuff that you need for in whatever form uh, when they're cooked than when you eat them raw. And some of them were kind of uh, surprising to me. Yeah, carrots. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you can increase uh, the concentration of uh, carotenoids by 14% by boiling carrots whole. Uh, don't slice them. And um, uh, if you uh, pan fry them, you can actually reduce that by 13%. That's so it's, it's better, better to boil them. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I like raw carrots. I guess I'll just kind of keep on doing that. But I'm not a fan of cooked carrots, but it's, uh, you know, they say with a little bit of honey on top or some maple syrup, there you go. Uh, you're in the honey and maple syrup. Yeah, I'm in the sugar business. I wonder yeah. if steaming is the same as boiling, because I prefer to steam them rather than boil them. But I, It doesn't say here, but that's an interesting question. I think that uh, it would be the same, maybe even better. Yeah, it says once they're cooked, they're easier to cut. Top of the tiny bit of honey or maple syrup to bring out the natural sweetness of carrots well uh, you know the next thing is uh, mushrooms and uh mushrooms soak up fat boy don't you see that in the pan when yes. you uh yeah when you're doing that but uh you get a flavor boost and also um it uh, uh uses it brings up a lot of antioxidants when you uh, when you uh fry mushrooms i never think that mushrooms have anything anyway i just think they're kind of a they have a meaty flavor that I like. I never think of them from a nutrition standpoint. Yeah, you just kind of think of them as uh, something that's there. Uh, Immune I, boosting. Yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, you know, the only mushrooms I know about that do anything else are like the psilocybin mushrooms. Right. But, uh, you know, this is um, this is interesting. This uh, is spinach. garden fork, Rick. So. I'm sorry. This, this is not the drug hour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> spinach. Uh, well, actually, sometime we should talk about the new... Uh, research is being done into the uh, the psychedelics. They're going back and and actually finding a lot of great uses uh, that they have been missing for um, uh, depression, anxiety disorders, and uh, PTSD, PTSD, all those things. Uh, using them in relatively small amounts, the amounts they were initially supposed to be used at, and. Uh, uh, psychiatrists are even quite excited about having new drugs that they could possibly t uh, treat uh, intractable depression with. Uh, uh, Michael uh, Pollan, uh, who's one of uh, Garden Fork's fav favorite uh, authors, uh, Botany of Desire, Desire, Omnivore's Dilemma, the, some of those books, uh, has written a new book uh, specifically about this topic, and I'm reading it now, and it's quite fascinating. Cool. Mm. Spinach. Uh, says here, um, you know, you can increase the uh, alcoholics, oxalate. I'm not very good with this. I'm not. Uh, she who must be obeyed is the nurse. I am Oxalic not a nurse. Acid. There it goes. Uh, by 40 percent, by uh, blanching your spinach, uh, taking it, dipping it in, hot, in uh, boiling water for one minute, taking it out and putting it in an ice bath. And um, so that's that's good. And it's easy to do. Asparagus. You're reading this one. Yeah. By the way, oxalic acid is what I use to knock down the varroa mite population in beehives now. So it is consider. I'm pretty sure it's considered an organic treatment for um, for them. So anyway, but yeah, asparagus. Yes. Yeah. Um, asparagus. Uh, let me see. Antioxidants, cancer fighting antioxidants by more than 16 percent, uh, essentially doing the same thing. Um, uh, just dunk them whole into a pot of boiling water. When they turn bright green, uh, toss them with uh, lemon juice and olive oil, a little bit of fat, and uh, you can increase them. And then uh, here's my favorite, tomatoes. And I did not know this at all. Uh, you can increase uh, vitamin C and antioxidants 62% by just baking your tomatoes at 200 degrees for 30 minutes and then uh, sprinkling um, a little bit of – or Sprinkle them before you put them in with olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, that kind of thing. Bake them for a half hour at 200 degrees. 
and uh, serve them as a side dish or put them on uh, on sandwiches. And that's 62 percent in uh, lycopene and the uh, the various uh, uh, chemicals that uh, are supposed to be good for you. This is that's why a- I love ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's why I love uh, canned tomatoes. Um, you know, canned tomatoes, despite what people think, are actually superior tomatoes. Um, they are uh, taken from the vine at uh, absolute point of ripeness. They're processed. They're heated. So this helps uh, bring out the uh, the good stuff. And then they're canned for freshness. And so I have nothing against uh, canned tomatoes when uh, the uh, the uh, fresh ones are not uh, are not around. They're peak. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, what else is on our list? Oh, I have to change windows here. I'm like deep into the consumer part. Oh, I did want to say one thing about um, the asparagus. Uh, There is, I don't know, it's a new way, but if you have a very narrow, round, tall, some sort of vessel to cook your asparagus, you can boil the bottom third and the top top two-thirds will steam. And you can use the whole length of the asparagus then because the, the lower part is always tough. And the boiling will tenderize the bottom part of the cut stem of the asparagus. And the top two-thirds, you just get steamed anyway. And then you have more asparagus for your money. I had no idea. You know, something else here. I was just looking at the uh, more from Consumers Report at the bottom. There's an article here. Is watermelon good for you? The answer is yes. Are avocados good for you? The answer is yes. Do white vegetables have health benefits? Yes, yes, yes. And are cruciferous vegetables healthier than the other ones? And the answer to that as well is yes. So um, wow. it, it's, uh, it's a great read uh, this month, and it's worth the um, – um, 25 bucks or so they charge every year for the uh, for the information. I know she who must be obeyed and I, we, we don't get wound up about, you know, running to stores and trying to compare and we got to replace a washer or dishwasher or something. Uh, you know, we hit Consumers Report first, find out what the latest information is, what looks like the best, read the comments from other uh, 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 subscribers about their experience. Then we go shopping instead of uh, doing it the other way around. It makes us less crazy. Well, a less crazy you is a good thing, Rick. (laughs) Yeah, keep it up, friend. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, I don't know if you guys have been following uh, Erin from The Impatient Gardener on Facebook or Instagram or on her website. Her website's really nice, by the way. But um, she has a multi-part series on building uh, these mega raised vegetable beds in a way that Um, the garden fork is just the polar opposite of, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this, this is not a, uh, just throwing something together. They planned this, they, uh, leveled a large area because I I forget how many beds there are. There are five, six, something like that, uh, leveled a a large area, uh, put good drainage underneath it. Uh, this has been a months long, uh, um, endeavor. And then they used, uh, cedar four by fours on the bottom because they were going to be in contact with the ground and then built up with um, uh, pine four by fours up to maybe two foot so they could sit on the side of the beds and uh, and reach across and and not have to uh, stoop or get down your knees and it's a it's a wonderful design it sure uh, has uh, taken them a while but they uh, uh, they're even still married after this so I think it's a pretty good deal they're all lined up it's on level ground um interesting thing which i have yet to do and i keep telling myself my garden is on a slope and the slope is pitched away from the arc of the sun Mm -hmm. and so i'm told that i get less i could warm up my beds faster and get more sunlight during the year if i made the beds um if i canted them so that the soil was more exposed more perpendicular to the sunlight Does that make sense? Sure, that makes sense. So right now my beds, because they're just sitting, I don't really level my, I don't try too hard to level the beds. They they kind of angle toward the shady part of the sky. And if I cut, essentially, I could cut wedges and, or I could just, I could just make the soil, I'm blanking on the words, but if I could point the soil more toward the sun have more of a uh, oblique angle or a right angle to the sun, I could increase my yield. And I'm 
I'm curious about that. So. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't make too much difference this time of year, probably. But as the sun starts to drift south, and uh, by the way, happy summer solstice, uh, yeah. midsummer nights. Uh, but as the sun begins to uh, drift south, you might be able to increase your uh, season and get started earlier if you if you did tilt your bed just a little bit. And you don't have to do it physically. I mean, you can just put um, an extra board height on the back and on the ends and then have the uh, uh, the soil slope away. Yep. So that would work, although you got to be careful about uh, losing your soil to uh, heavy rains, that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't – we haven't had that issue. Maybe uh, my friend, the market gardener who listens to our podcast, could weigh in on this. I will, I will see him at the farmer's market, and I will well, see. Well, I need to find out what he knows about me first, and then I'll let you know if his ideas are any good or not. It's not what he knows. It's what he thinks he knows. It's his ah, impression of your online persona. I see. Ooh, well. Speaking of your online persona, um, we got a typewritten viewer mail – and it wasn't even sent to me. No, it came to the house here. Uh, it was from Martin J. Uh, he's a ham radio operator. W3 Papa Romeo. W3 Papa Romeo. This is November Hotel 2 Foxtrot. Um, we uh, talked. Uh, I sent him a letter back by uh, ARRL.net, uh, the uh, American Radio Relay League. Uh, dot net and uh, uh, probably overwhelmed him with all kinds of information, but uh, it was good to know he's out there. He has uh, pres- it looks like his dad actually had this call sign before he uh, uh, before Martin inherited it, and he's a uh, radio extra uh, amateur extra, uh, which means that he um, can copy uh, code speeds up to about twenty words a minute, and he prefers. Uh, CW, which is what we call code, continuous wave, and I came up uh, through the military as a uh, as a Morse code intercept operator, and so uh, we could probably have a good time uh, chatting back and forth uh, uh, doing that. But anyway, thank you so much, Martin. He listens to the uh, Garden Fork. He came to see about the uh, Garden Tower project that he heard us talking about, and uh, then he noticed on my website I was a ham radio operator, and he just wanted to. Uh, to, to say hi so uh, cool. 73 is my friend oh one thing it's not on the list but i just put out a video about determining if your car battery is dead or if the alternator is not functioning and and you had some feedback on that yeah uh your your video was excellent as always and uh when i was policing particularly with older cars i, I jumped a lot of cars in my life uh doing that and I on the older cars, lots of times I would jerk on the cables just to make sure they were attached well. The battery and cables that the are battery from cables. the engine to the battery. Yeah. And about half the time they came loose in my hand. Um, acid will trickle down inside the insulation and begin wearing away at the um, at the uh, copper. Mm-hmm. And eventually it reduces it so the car won't start. And, and, and that's particularly when you, you know, they say, well, I got a new battery, but my car still won't start. You jerk on the cables and sure enough, they come apart in the middle. So it's always something to think about. Um, uh, the older your car gets, the you can reap tremendous benefits from your electrical system just by replacing your cables every now and then. And then also having quality jumper cables goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the the if you're paying ten bucks for a um, a set of jumper cables and a um, an air inflator, you uh, aren't buying quality equipment. And there is nothing like a great pair of jumper cables. If you're spending twenty five fifty bucks, uh, you're getting some great cables with huge uh, conductors uh, uh, wire inside and uh, quality uh, clamps on the ends. And it's really worth paying for. Mine are eight gauge. The wire is eight gauge copper stranded. So that's that's nice. big. Yeah, that's big. But I carry them, and I've, I've never had to jump my own car. I've, I've, because I'm about karma as boomerang and just helping. You know, I generally think everyone's good in the world, so um, I just, you know, it's kind of neat that you can, you can tell when someone needs a jump. So, and it's funny. A couple times, it's been that's a, a man and a woman, and the woman has come over and asked, you know, do you have any jumper cables? Because the guy is just too proud. Oh know? yeah. <laughs> You know, um, so. one of the interesting things, I've jumped a car here a while back for a guy, 
And I backed up to his car. He says, you can't do that. I mean, yeah, the engine's on the other end of your car. What are you thinking? But what he didn't know was that in, in the Prius, the uh, starter battery is actually in the back. And so there's a little hatch you pop and you connect to the starter battery and you uh, jump them off that way. That is so funny. I, need to, I didn't even think about jumping a car with a Prius. Yeah, yeah, you have to think about it because uh, the starter battery is a completely different battery than the tractor battery, the the main traction battery. Right. And so, um, and you, there's really no way you can tie into that traction battery. But the starter battery, which keeps everything charged, keeps the lights on, keeps uh, holds your settings on the radio and in all the computers in the Prius, uh, is uh, in the back, and so that's where you jump from. Who knew? Wow. So, okay, a lot we've covered here. If you all have some thoughts, uh, you can type write us a letter. Um, the address is Box 130, Cobra, Connecticut, 06021, if you want. Or uh, yeah. just send us an email. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. That's radio at gardenfork.tv. So. You know, somebody else sent us some email. Let me look here real quick. Okay. I'll fill some time. Uh, coming up is a video about the LED grow light rig I made. Uh, our executive producer, Jimmy, was like, what's with the video you keep talking about? And I'm like, so I finally, what happened was I deleted half the footage by accident. So I, um, I made an interesting beginning to it and I'm editing that today and I hope to have it up. It'll probably be up even before this podcast is up. So, uh. I always struggle with the music. I'm trying to make, I've really found that if you lay a little bit of music under video, it just is more impactful and engaging. So rather than just a linear DIY, uh, I shot some slow motion welding footage with this one. So we'll see. Okay. You know, uh, I can't find the letter right now, but it, uh, I think her name was Jean and she sent you the message. You sent it on to me. Wanted to know if I had actually gotten a Roomba yet. Oh, and yes. Then, yeah, and then related that she had found one at a, um, a thrift store and paid very little money for it, brought it home, and all it needed was be cleaned out and add a new battery, and she got a new Roomba. I don't have one yet, but uh, I'm still kind of thinking about it. You, on the other hand, owned one. Yeah, it's her, Nicole is her name. Did Nicole, Rick, okay. It says, uh, Roomba, did Rick ever get one? I love mine. Got it off a local listserv because it was broken. Needed a new battery and a thorough cleaning. Had my $400 Roomba for three years. That is a Garden Fork story. Rehabbing a thrift store Roomba. That's from Nicole. That's right. I, um, yeah, I have it and um, it. I really like it. I I have older one and um, it may have improved itself with thicker carpets. It just depends on the car. If your carpet lays nice and flat and it's thin, the Roomba will get up on it and clean it. We have one kind of decorative uh, thin rug and the corner always gets messed up on it. And it just, I just, I don't think it has enough rigidity to it, but um, for a low pile carpet and wood floors and tile floors and linoleum and that, it's fantastic. And so you sometimes have to do a little touch ups uh, cause it is a round object that doesn't get into square corners always very well. And I just hit that. I got a little portable vacuum. You can just, you know, get the dog hair in yeah. the corners. So. Uh, and, and with uh, labs, two labs, you certainly need uh, uh, something to clean up all that shed. Yeah, I'm going to um, Roomba actually after this because the one I have is kind of, the newer ones are quieter, but it does sound like an a, a SUV robot clunking around in the room next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine how my terriers would take to a, a Roomba. Yeah, the Labradors get out of the way, but they, uh, yeah, I just said my, my Terriers would attack it. I think they'd be having a wonderful time. <laughs> All right, everyone. So more for your money there. Uh, another half hour of us talking and you are probably at your destination. So thank you all for listening. It's always great to hear from you too. Radio at GardenFork.tv. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Get out there and grow something. See you later, <laughs> my friend. Garden Fork Radio's executive producer is Jimmy Goots of hollowbooks.com and our music is licensed from uniquetracks.com. Music